and in our hearts your work begin your dwelling place now make us son of the soul almighty divine around and in us brightly In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we forgive our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated for the Kyrie. In peace... In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and their praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We sing this is the feast. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. And might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. We pray together the collect for the day. You can find it printed on the insert inside of your worship bulletin. 
Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings, even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Thus says the Lord, Keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it, and holds fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Be Our epistle lesson comes from Romans chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For I, now I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards the election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient, in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you. This will serve the basis for our meditation together this morning. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Ah, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire and her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now join together making bold confession of our faith in that triune God by speaking together the words of the Nicene Creed. 
Those words are found printed for you on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated now for hymn number 915. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, God's grace, 
His mercy and his peace be yours. From our almighty God, our all-loving God, our Heavenly Father, his one and only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. It is our prayer that he come to us this day, touching us, our hearts, our minds, our lives in him, now and until life everlasting. Amen. My dear friends in Christ Jesus, before I start, I give you greetings from your brothers and sisters in Christ in the Lutheran Church in Rodham, from the pastor Wojtek and his wife Kasia. They are so grateful that you generously and graciously sent us there to be amongst them the last two weeks, and they wanted me to send you their greeting and your thanks. So I've done it. The words of our text come from the gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 15, as I read for you earlier. My dear friends in Christ, I don't know if you've ever given much thought to this at all or not, but mercy is very annoying. It's very annoying. I mean, don't get me wrong, when it comes to mercy, we love to be on the receiving end of it. In fact, so much so that we will feel guilty for a while, but hey, that kind of wears off, and we're ready for mercy again. Let me give you an explanation of what mercy is so that we're all on the same page. Mercy, undeserved love, undeserved kindness. For example, Nicole, have you ever played the game Mercy? No? You haven't? You know where you take both hands and you interlock the fingers? Have you ever done that? And whoever yells mercy first loses? You don't know that game? You want to play? <laughs> Probably a good idea. Yeah, because what you do is you lock fingers and then you push as hard as you can. It's kind of like arm wrestling, but it's called mercy. It's called mercy because it really hurts. And as a kid, we'd play that. I don't know why, actually. And if you played it once, you would think that would be enough. But no, you think you could do it better the next time. Now, I want you, Nicole, I want you to picture something, OK? Because it's hard for you to imagine a couple things. I used to be young. I used to be skinny. Very, very, very skinny. One day I'll show you pictures of me when I was your age. I mean, if you put c cement on me, I still wouldn't weigh 100 pounds. It was just all through high school and everything. Okay, you got the picture? I used to be young. I used to be very skinny. You know what that meant? I wasn't very strong. So I had to become smart. And I became smart by playing mercy more times than I should have and saying, this is stupid, I can't win, all right? As people just laugh to see this little scrawny kid buckle under, and it hurts. And then somebody else say, Mike, you want to play Mercy? And I'd say, yeah. Not very smart, but I got smarter. The whole idea was, Okay, you consented to play this game. You said okay. So you deserve what you get. Yeah. We have consented to be children of God, and we deserve nothing but punishment and evil. We deserve nothing but death and damnation. But God reaches out through his son Jesus on the cross and has mercy on us, rescues us. Where in the world would we ever think or come up with the idea that God's grace is deserved and earned? That because in my feeble attempt of trying very hard to win the game, that alone should make me win. And it doesn't. God's law is very specific. You sin, you die. It doesn't say this sin is more punishable than that sin. Sin is sin. And the wages of sin, any sin, is death. We're clear, right? This is what we are. As sinners, we deserve 
death. One person is not better than another. And then the wheels start to work. And they start to grind. And you can see the smoke coming out the ears as we're thinking about this. You mean to tell me, Pastor, that a murderer, if just before he dies, repents and says he is sorry that God forgives him all of his sins and he gets to go to heaven? And the answer to that is, Yes, that's mercy. The same mercy that you have received, that I have received. But that's not fair. I, I've heard that as a kid growing up. There's just me and my sister, okay? In fact, was she here? Oh, she didn't come? Okay, probably best. When I was gone, she was here. When I was coming back, she left. That's what I know. I think she went to church with my parents. Oh, okay. That's what happened. Didn't know. If you would have met her, she would have told you a whole new story, but you didn't meet her, so I'm right. Okay? But there's just myself and my sister, and my sister being a year younger than me and a girl, you know what that means in a, between boys and girls, right, Nicole? You've got brothers. You know what that means, right? You lose. You're younger and you're a girl. You lose. You lose. That's all there is to it. Because mom and dad can't be around all the time, you lose. That's it. And so, but my sister had a bigger mouth than me. I know, it's amazing. But it's true. And you would hear, Mom! And I'm not exaggerating when I hear, when she would yell from the backyard. All of the city of Detroit could hear my sister. Mom! You holler in Detroit. Mom! Janet, what's the matter? Mike's touching me. Don't play with him. But I want to play with him. Then he's going to touch you. That's not fair. I don't want him to touch me. Michael, go play with the neighbor. The whole idea and concept of having a bigger mouth or screaming louder to be able to receive that love and that mercy of God is the same way. God, have mercy on me. According to your unfailing love, have mercy on me. And he does. And he does, and he does, and he does. And we become so engrossed and so used to his never failing, never ending love, undeserved love, that he constantly reaches down and rescues us. That when we happen to take a look at somebody else, there's a different standard. And mercy becomes annoying. When it rescues me every moment of every day, because I need it that often, it's great. But mercy becomes so annoying when it's reached out to other people. Proof. I can't explain to you. I have no idea what happened. And I don't know why. All I know is that it happened. And I blame God and I blame David Fiala. David Fiala was a missionary in, the, in Slovakia. And he put out a plea for help in his mission there in Slovakia. That's who I blame. And next thing you know is I end up going to Slovakia. And then the next thing you know is I tear up my knee. And the next thing I know is the people there understand what the word to be forgiven is. And the next thing I know, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, asked me, hey, would you go to Poland? Come to find out it was through David Fiala, and I go to Poland, and then I go to Poland, and then I go to Poland, and then I go to Poland. And I don't know how all this came about or how it happened, but all I know is 
It's kind of like my sister in the backyard. God, help us. And in that time period, over many years, I would hear from, I'm certain, very well-meaning people that there's a this or a that, not a both and. In other words, why would you go overseas to share the gospel when there's people here who need it? Did you hear the story of Jesus and his disciples and the conversation that they have because a Canaanite woman. Do you understand the Canaanites? If you're in Genesis, I know you're getting to because the Canaanites are the enemies of the Jews. If you were to have a number one enemy, it would be the Canaanites. So the fact that anybody would give any attention to the Canaanites would be appalling. It would be disgusting. It would be awful. And yet this Canaanite woman, knowing that she is an enemy of a Jew, will come up to a Jewish man because she heard about him, that he was different from all the other Jews, and that he had this power from God to be able to show the love and the mercy and the grace. So she, a Canaanite woman, entered a whole region and area of Jews. By herself, she comes in and says, Have mercy on me, Rabbi. Have mercy on me, my Savior. Have mercy on me, O Lord. My daughter, she is possessed by a demon. And the disciples' response, taking a look at her on her knees in a pitiful situation, desperate, said with the love from God himself, as they looked at her, those disciples responded, send her away. She's annoying us. Just send her away. She's a Canaanite. She's nobody. Some of you may even recall pictures that I have shown when I was in Uganda last year. One was of a woman who I'm sure was only in her 60s, but she looked like she was double that age. So frail, so tiny, had all she could do to walk. She came to our clinic just to be able to receive some medicine, and she saw a pastor standing over there in the shade She'd been standing in line, and she knew that standing in line, it would take her all day just to have a doctor look at her to help her. And she still might not even be seen that day. But over there, in the shade of the building, she saw a pastor. Maybe because he was white, he stuck out. I don't know. But all I know is this woman with her cane hobbled over and she came to me and spoke in her tribal language, words I have no clue, but I had a translator tell me later. And she immediately got down on her knees and she said, as it was translated to me, will you please have mercy on me and pray? She was standing in line in the hot, equatorial sun, the equator. It was beating down on her. She was losing her place in line to get the medicine that her body so desperately needed. She had a choice to make, and she made it. And not only did she make it, she got down on her knees and begged me to have mercy and have a prayer for it with her. That was her choice. She came for one thing and saw a greater need. Do you understand? That was the Canaanite woman. She faced the ridicule of a whole community. And she got down on her knees and begged for mercy. Begged for mercy. Who of us would not want to have a prayer? I had a prayer with that woman. 
I had put my hands on her head and on her shoulder, and I had a prayer with that woman. And as I was going to have the translator translate what I said, she interrupted him and said, it's not necessary, God knows. And I continued to pray. When I said amen, I looked up, and there's a lineup of people who gave up their position in line to receive medicine for their bodies just to have mercy from God. I heard stories of beatings, of rape. I heard so many stories of people who were being abused that thought that this was way more important. I guess you could say we set up that day a church, a church of sinners who desperately needed the love and the mercy of God himself. And they were pleading and they were crying out. Two days later, one of the people came back and he said to me, I just had to come back to thank you. The prayers did more than any of the medicine I ever got. God is good and he's great. Thank you for sharing him with me. Now I want to ask you a question. Is it really either or you go to Poland or you go to Africa or you go to Sioux City, South Sioux City and that's it? Or can it be both? I mean, take a look at the words of Jesus. He didn't answer her a word. And his disciples said, send her away. So Jesus told the woman. Told the woman something that he already knew. Her faith was stronger than those disciples. I was sent for these people over here. This is why I'm here is for the Jews. And she says, help me. It's not right to take even the crumbs, even a crumb will do so much for me. Just a little tiny bit. The faith of that woman who is receiving mercy, because you see, she already knows she doesn't deserve it. She already knows she doesn't earn it. And yet, it was a gift from God, and she is so thankful and grateful. Where the disciples were always receiving it and took it for granted. We always receive God's grace and his mercy. We know about the love of Christ Jesus. But to be willing to reach out with that mercy to others who are desperately asking it, no matter who they are, is so very, very important. And we give them a chance, and we give them another chance, and another chance, and another chance, and another chance, because God's mercy is that all-encompassing, that it reaches not only to us, but to others. And David said it very well in his psalm, my cup runneth over. In other words, God just keeps showering me with his forgiveness and his love and his grace. I am so thankful that it pours out through me to others. And they see Jesus. And the church is fed and it's nourished and it grows. You are that church. I am that church. Wherever God's love and his mercy is needed, that's where we go. And it's not one or the other, it's and. Because you see, the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. The need is so great. Whether it be well-developed countries where everything's doing well, like in Poland, or maybe undeveloped countries like Uganda or maybe Burkina Faso, I will confess to you, and I've given a serious prayerful thought, you know that in November I was asked to lead a team, medical team to Burkina Faso. And as you know, I don't know the news. Laverne told me about the eclipse tomorrow. I didn't even know about that. So, I mean, and that was in Poland that I got that. But I got a message from the Luther Church, Missouri Synod that there were some murders from ISIS in the capital of Burkina Faso. And so the Synod is taking a look at whether we're going to go there or they're going to send us to Togo because of the damage. And I trust what they do. And I know 
out of your love and your concern, you're going to say, ah, maybe you shouldn't go because you could die. And I want you to know I appreciate your love and concern. But my answer to you is, have you driven the streets of South Sioux City? Oh, my word. I think I might be safer with ISIS in Burkina Faso than here in South Sioux City. I, I'm, and school started. Oh. oh, my word. But God's grace abounds. And I know that when he sees fit to call me to his side, he will. But one thing is certain, whether it be here in South Sioux City or whether it be in Poland or Africa or wherever God sends me, Wherever he sends you, his mercy is going to abound. Because I will always have the picture of that lady who got down on her knees in front of me and asked me to pray. You can ask me, I can show you that picture again. And next thing you know, it just spreads. We could almost change our name, but it's really implied with the name of our church, Hope Lutheran Church. Do you understand what our hope is? It's in Christ Jesus, in his suffering, his death, his resurrection, and that's where his mercy abounds. And that's where our hope lies. Underlying the name of hope is the mercy of God. It's not deserved. You can argue every respect of it, and you will be correct. It's not deserved whatsoever. You can argue how bad a certain person is or how bad the circumstances are, and you will be correct. But I can tell you that God's mercy makes no sense. It makes no sense when it comes to me, and I praise God that he continues to shower it upon me. And it is my prayer that he continues to shower his love and his mercy and his grace through me to each and every one of you. And I pray that as you receive it through me and as you receive it directly from him, it continues to overflow to one another to build us up as his people, his people of hope and mercy and grace. And watch South Sioux City and watch the changes that God will do within every single life. It's amazing how it spreads. Where it starts with one, and next thing you know, you've got a lineup of people. So go ahead and call out, God, have mercy on me. And praise God that he does, that he is not annoyed. And that as we receive his mercy, it's no longer annoying for us to be able to just share it with one another. To God be that glory, to us that blessing. Amen. And now may that amazing grace of God and the mercy that he graciously showers upon us. May it give you that peace that surpasses all human understanding, that keeps your hearts and your minds and your lives in him now and until life everlasting. Amen. With thanksgiving in our hearts, we lovingly, joyfully, and trustingly offer back to him the first fruit offerings of our hearts as well as of our hands.
name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, be with your church throughout the world that she may steadfastly proclaim the irrevocable gifts and calling of God, that the disobedient may receive mercy and that those who hear may become branches grafted onto the true vine. We especially pray for those at Trinity Lutheran in Ponca, Nebraska, and Martinsburg, at Grace Lutheran in Blairstown, Iowa, St. Paul Lutheran in Boone, Iowa, Trinity Lutheran in Boone, Iowa, the South Dakota District, Concordia University in River Forest, Illinois, our brothers and sisters at St. Alton Presbyterian Church in Alton, Iowa, St. Michael's Catholic Church here in South Sioux City, Keep them in your care and grace, that your word may abound, and your people may rejoice in the truth of your word, rejoicing in your mercy, your love, and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. We humbly implore you, O Lord, to bless our congregation here at Hope Lutheran, that our offerings and our sacrifices of praise are acceptable to you. That, you, that this place could always be a house of prayer for all people, and that through us you will gather the lost and the outcast, the widow, the orphan, all who are in need, that your love, your mercy, and grace may always abound. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, bless our government, those who protect us, that they may keep justice and do what is righteous in your sight that they may carry out their duties and responsibilities in accordance with your will, that our land will be blessed with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. O oh Lord, in your mercy. O oh almighty, all oh merciful God, we humbly implore you to have mercy on those who are sick and afflicted, like the Canaanite woman begging you for that mercy of help and healing, we come to you on behalf of those who are seeking that same help and healing. Be with especially Keith Safar, Tom Grau, Diane Guthridge, Preston Thielman, Kim Dalm. Be with Rob Langenberg, Ann Ortman, Tanner Haberman, Kim Fales, and Matt Legrand. Be with Josh Legrand, Rich Steffens, Mary Bowes, and Susan Utek. Be with Sarah Hansen, with Beth, Ron Peters, Ken Todd, and Donna Singleton. Be with Marty Delperdang, Kathy Mast, Pastor Jeff Walsh, Mary Ann Lau, and Arnold Awe. Be with Holy, Howie Holenreed, Jane Winter, Kimberly Christensen Bolke, Pastor Klaus Robb. Be with Marv Hunt, Philip Foster, Lee Umlin, Justin Miller. Be with Dalton Sherlock, May Reuter. Lord, give them comfort and help and if it is your will that they must continue on in their affliction, give them peace and strength to look toward you, to lift them up and draw them closer with you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who come to your altar this day by your gracious invitation to partake at, of your holy meal at this table. We humbly implore you that you bless this means of grace to strengthen us in faith and love toward you and to bring us to unity with you and one another. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We rise and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Page 162. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper when he had given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the very body of Jesus Christ given into death for all your sins. Take and drink the very blood of Jesus shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now may this body of blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you that you may this life of blessing. What is peace and his joy because your sins are
atoning blood of Jesus shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the very blood of Christ shed for you. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Join his peace and his joy because your sins are forgiven.
sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. And all who see the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord now bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Hymn 818. all of you this morning um just i have no announcements i just wanted to say good morning so do i have any announcements laverne do i have any announcements okay ah kevin do i one all right thank you that's great any, I can't top that. 
We continue Genesis. There we go. We continue Genesis. Believe it or not, we are, it doesn't seem like it because we're only in chapter 37. But honestly, within two months or less, we will be done with Genesis. We will be done. So I will talk to the Board of Christian Education, but I want some input from you. What you want to study next? There's Exodus. Um, any, any other announcements? We had a wonderful time. I understand that Terry and I are still not on this time zone. That's for sure. It's difficult it's coming back, isn't it? Both faster. I about it this morning. Terry has an announcement. <laughs> You were dressed this morning. Was I like that? That's how you look. <laughs> no matter what happens, about 7 o'clock, I get really tired. I, I can stay up till about 9, 8.30. What is time is it, Kirsten? And I'm gone. I'm, I'm, I'm awake here at 2 o'clock. And then by 1, 2 o'clock, I'm awake. That's, that's the same time as morning time. I'm getting up over there. Yeah. Have a nice day. Jesus Christ, have a nice forever.